let's construct our battery case. We've got two screws and two springs. And we have a battery box. Take your rotary tool, a Dremel, a Radio Shack rotary tool, or a drill, and drill four holes. Here, 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 and here. Alright, once you've drilled your holes, you're going to add your screws. Just force it in. Most of the way down. And then on the far corner, there we go. Take your screw, or your spring rather, and these are just random springs that I found. The only thing to check is whether or not they conduct electricity. And you can use a multimeter to check that. So I pulled one spring, or one side of the spring open a little bit, and then fed it through the hole that I drilled. And I just pulled out just one or two turns, just so that it'll still be sticking out on the inside, but I have a little bit to grab onto on the outside. So I use a multimeter to check to see if it conducts. I'm going to turn my multimeter on, switch it to the sound mode. Um, what that does is when it detects a, co a connection, it beeps. So you can see that my screws are conductive and my springs are also conductive. And so is my screwdriver. I'll take the final s spring now. So what I'm actually hitting is there's a little plastic plastic piece at the bottom that I'm gonna have to clip off here. just getting in the way of the battery. And now we fit. Last touch is to take a sharpie minus plus plus, minus. So now you've got your battery pack and it fits your batteries. Take a metal file and just file down the sharp pointy bits off those screws. Take some wire. This is 18 gauge speaker wire from the dollar store. So there's two 
wires together here. We only need one piece. We're going to strip off a very large portion of it, about an inch. Having some troubles here. There we go. An inch from one side. Give it a twist to prevent it from fraying. And just a short piece on the other side. So just about a centimeter on the other side. Metric and imperial. Take the long, long end and wrap it a full turn around the side of the screw so that it wraps up back on itself. Now the reason you're doing this is these screws are zinc plated and it do, they don't stick well to the, to the solder, the screw surface itself. By doing a full wrap around, you ensure that the wire will at least solder onto itself and therefore add some strength. The springs that I'm using, fortunately, solder quite easily, and so we don't have to worry so much about that. They're also much smaller. Now we'd like to solder our wire on. We have our soldering iron, and we have our solder. Solder is composed of lead and tin. You can get the lead-free solder as well, but if you're just beginning, you'll find it much more, much more difficult to work with, the lead-free solder than the leaded solder. Lead and tin will both kill you and make you crazy, so you don't want to breathe it in. Breathe it in. Exhale onto the gear soldering while you're working and use, use as little solder as possible. What you want to do is use the soldering iron to heat up the wire and then touch the solder to the wire and melt it on that way, rather than trying to put solder onto the soldering iron directly. You want to make sure that you have actually soldered both the wire and the spring and that you have a solid connection and then you also want to solder the screw. The screw is much harder because it acts as a heat sink. It takes away the heat before you can before you can get it hot enough to melt the solder. We're going to use our connectivity tester now, the beeper, to check to make sure that from the inside, this spring should be connected to this screw. And it is. Don't touch the screw yet with your hands because it is. it will still be very hot. So that bridges the connections there which is what we need to put our batteries in series. Don't solder with the batteries in the battery pack, and again, don't put the batteries in right now, because that screw is still very hot, and you can damage your batteries, and maybe even cause them to explode. Where you want to mount your battery pack will determine how long of a cable you need coming out of the battery pack. We have our connector. It has a fairly short lead on it to begin with, but we can extend that with any kind of wire. I have here my dollar store 18 gauge wire, speaker wire. One option that you can do, that you have, is to have a short lead coming out of your battery pack, and then make an extension cable. You just put a male connector on one end and a female connector on the other end. 
and then you can plug the extension cable into your battery pack and the other end will plug into your light that gives you a lot of flexibility because you can permanently mount the extension cable on your bicycle but then have the battery pack in your panniers and the bicycle the light itself on your handlebars and you have the option of just taking the light or just taking the battery pack and never having to take a really long cable with you we're going to use some speaker wire to have just a short but useful length cable maybe about that long Side that's going to connect, side that's going to connect to the battery pack. We again need to have a very long strip for going around the screw, about one inch, and a short section for going around the spring. Now this wire has two colors. There's a blue line on one side and no line on the other side. Electricity cannot tell the difference between wires as far as electricity is concerned. Any connected wire is all one piece and it doesn't matter what it looks like. The colors and are entirely here. for our own convenience to identify them. That being said, you should follow a convention of which wire is positive and which wire is negative. Usually black is negative. In this case we don't have a black wire. So I'm going to use the striped, striped wire as the positive. Your best bet is to always use the one that makes the most sense to you. That way, if you need to build yourself an extension cable six months down the line, you don't even have to think about which one's positive and which one's negative because the natural one is the one that you chose initially. Alright, so once we've attached our wires, we need to check the connectivity again. It's always best to check as you're moving along so that when you complete everything and it doesn't work, you know what you've already checked. So we're going to check the positive wire. We're going to set our multimeter into the right mode. And then we're going to check the positive wire and we're going to check the negative wire. Good.